Welcome to St. Andrew's Daily Prayer for Tuesday, November the 29th, in the first week of Advent. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. A reading from Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre, on the ten-stringed harp sing his praise. Sing for him a new song, play skillfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice, the earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the peoples. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever, and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them, and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host, no warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death, and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. Let us pray. Feed your people, Lord, with your holy word, and free us from the emptiness of our wrongful desires, that we may sing the new song of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 12 to 21. Therefore, I intend to keep on reminding you of these things, though you know them already and are established in the truth that has come to you. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort, so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We heard ourselves this voice come down from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, 
that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. By the power of the Spirit, and in unity with Christ, trusting always in God's life-giving intent for creation, let us pray. Lord, we pray for your world. Speak your word of reconciliation into the minds of those with the power to change societies for the better, that they might work toward mending what is broken and repairing relationships damaged by prejudice, misunderstanding, and injustice. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church among the nations and in Canada, for the Presbyterian Church in Canada, and for our own St. Andrew's community, that we might all be newly inspired and freshly equipped to continue to invite everyone we meet into faith in you. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all people who are burdened by financial difficulties, by loss of work, or by an inability to make ends meet for whatever reason. Open the eyes and hearts of the people around them who can help, that those who are burdened may find someone to share their burdens with them, and so make them lighter to bear. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are in need, especially those who lack safe or adequate housing, and those who are at risk of eviction, that they will be able to access the social supports they need to find a safe and lasting home. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. We pray for congregations participating in the PCC's New Beginnings Renewal Program as they work to discern God's call for their future and plan a way forward. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Teach us, Lord Jesus, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labor and not to seek to rest, to give of ourselves and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find you watching and waiting. Amen.